Okay, so this problem here, you always want to pretend that the um, sh boy, sh the side without the variable, is, is non existent. If you pretend that is non-existent, you will see that you have to get rid of the only number there next to the variable. So that's a negative 4. Okay? Yeah. Don't forget that negative. So you multiply. That's a divide by a negative 4. So you must multiply by a negative 4. Multiply by a negative 4 on both sides. Okay? And then shh, you get k equals. When you multiply, you, make, you need to make your numbers improper. Okay. Hello. You want me to make the copies for the algebra quick? Uh, test? Test, yeah. I, I'm still making it. Okay. I'm I'll make, make it tomorrow. I'm going to make the uh, awesome. homework and um, test. Thank you. For both? For both classes? I'll do the homework for both classes okay. and I'll make the test. Thank you. You're quick. so wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> 33 <laughs> over 20, right? Right? Yeah. Times sh, times a negative 4. <coughs> cross cancel. Sh, cross cancel. You get negative 1 and 5. So k is equal to negative 33 over 5. Okay? Oh, or um, 6, negative 6. It divides into to their 6 times, right? Yeah. With a remainder of 3, correct? Oh, over 5. That's remainder 3, right? Yeah. Do I see that? Yeah, yeah. Your remainder is always your numerator. Okay? The next one, remember this is times. That's 5 over 2 times. So the opposite of times is divide 5 over 2. But when you're dividing, you, you keep the first, change, and take the reciprocal of the second, right? Like that, correct? Yeah. yeah. So you're basically multiplying. In the end, you end up multiplying by its reciprocal, right? Yeah. Um, that way you cancel out that, 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 that. And yeah. it's a negative. Don't forget the negative. Yeah. So if you multiply one, one side by um, negative 2 over 3, you have to do that same to the two other side. Five. 2 over 5. Thank you for correcting me. Okay? Equals to n. Do you see how we isolate the n? Yes. Okay, so then we, what do we need to do to, to our mixed number? Uh, improbable. Yeah, so we got 15, 15 negative over 4 times that negative 2 over 5. Cancel out. 1 and negative 3. 1 and 2. So you get negative 3. Oh, positive, right? Yes. Because a negative and a negative is a positive. Over 2 <laughs> equals to n. Or. Or. <laughs> 2 goes into 3 once, yeah? Yes. This is 5 over 2 times 2 over 5. Say that again. This is 5 over 2 times 2 over 5. You just cross them out. They yes, you're right. These all equal to 1, but 1 times n is n. That's why we just cross them out. Very good. Right? 1 times 10 is 10. 1 times anything is itself, correct? So we, any question? 1 with a remainder of 1, right, over yes. 2. Okay? So the next one, we isolate which number? We, we pretend this isn't there, right? Yeah. We get rid of um, the negative 4 over 5 because it's a plus or minus. We have to add or subtract to get isolate the variable. Yeah. Subtract, we end up adding. So what, what do you need to do? In order to subtract, can this be a minus? In order to, be, to subtract these two numbers, can this be a minus? No, no, this has can't. to be a plus. Yes. The signs need to be opposite of each other in order to subtract to get a zero. Right? Okay, so we get zero here plus n, you get n equals. Now, if you add, if you add four and five.
5 over 6, I'm going to work that on the side because I don't have enough room. Because with um, fractions, you need to find the least common denominator, yeah. which is 12. No, both can go. Oh, yeah, 12. 12, right? Yeah. If you use 24, it's fine. You just need to reduce. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with 24. You just have to reduce at the end. Okay? So um, times 2, right? It's 10 times 3 <coughs> over, yeah, you get 3 over 12. 13. You add them, right? 13 over 12 and the 4. Yeah. Now, with a mixed number, you can't have an improper. So now, 12 goes into 13 how many times? Once. Once. Goes in one whole time with a remainder of what? 12. With a remainder of 1. Oh, oh. remainder. Yeah. Yes. It go, it's one whole, right? Yes. Yeah. This one whole, do you see that one whole that I put up there? With a remainder of 1, correct? Mm -hmm. And then you add the whole numbers together, you get 5, five and 1, 12. Got it? Yeah. So, so with with adding and subtracting fractions, the easiest is to leave it mixed. You can make it improper, but it becomes very difficult. Okay? Let's do this one here. So if you know how to do it without exponents, you can do that. But in this class, I'm going to do it using exponents, okay? So... That means I'm going to make this 8 and 3. They're both. Oh, I know how to do it. Okay? 8 and 3. I'm going to do the factor tree. Mm -hmm. so and then 2 four. and 4. And then 2 and 2. Do you see that? So I have students that this is best for them. And then I'm going to rewrite the problem as 2. Okay, as 2, 2 to the what? Radical 2, two. the third, right? Because mm -hmm. there's 3 of them. And there's times 3. Does everyone see that? Yeah. Now, and then x to the ninth and y to the second. Okay. 2 times... 2 divided by 2, 3 divided by 2, is there any remaining? Yes, one. Yeah, so one, one of the 2 is remaining, but one of them comes out, correct? And then how about the 3? Can we do anything with the 3? No. No, times 3. It remains inside. Is there anything remaining inside for x? Yes. Yes, yes right? So okay, is that for the factor tree? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's why I was confusing. Four. What do you mean? What's the factor tree? Because I did it the other way. Yeah, I'm doing it with the factor tree. That, yeah, and I was looking at it and it was confusing. Okay. So um, that's how I got two to the third. The factor tree, Victoria, probably benefits you. Okay, two x to the what power? Fourth, right? And then y. Is there any y left? No, just y on the outside. Okay. So it'd be then it'll be four x four, four y. X to four y. It's two. And what's this six, when you multiply? Six. Six x. See that's okay. easier for me. Yeah, I think it's a lot easier for a lot of students. Like Half of my students find this easier. Really? I don't think so. I don't think so either. It looks way easier. Okay. That that confuses me more. 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 It is yeah, more work, but you get to the right answer. I think it's better because I understand it more like that. Mm -hmm. I just grab like... Shh. Okay, this is 8 times 8, right? 10y. You can stop here when you get 8 times 8 and leave it like that because we can write it 8 squared, x to the 10, and y to the 4. Okay? Um, we divide this by 2. What, is there any 8 remaining? No. 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 So 8, the square root. How about, is there any x remaining? No. no. Is there any y remaining? No. Oh, so we don't need a square root. x to the 5th, y oh, to so the... Also, only square root is 30. 
Yes. Only square root when something is remaining. Get it? Yep. Okay. This one here. These will be on the test. Shh. Guys, don't be. I don't want you to miss any of these because it basically looks like this. Just like your quiz where the review looks exactly like the test, well, the same thing's going to happen. Okay? So what is the first rule we're going to do here? Power to a power. Power to a power. We always do the power on the outside first. Okay? Power to a power. Okay, power to a power, right? This still was difficult. Right? Yeah. And then that means we do this and this to that, right? 2 to the second, x to the sixth, y to the second. Okay. And then we have the other one, 4, x to the seventh, y to the sixth. I have to put this. That you know the rule because it's common core. You need to know the math vocabulary. Yeah, how come they I don't, don't need to know? Okay. They, eight, x to the fifth, y to the eighth. What are you going to do next now? No, wait. Another one? Uh, you know the quotient rule of powers? Not yet. Look so at the top. No, uh, the product, product, rule product rule of powers. The top has too much stuff we can do. The numerator has too much we can do. So no, we can do, power do. I mean the pow yeah. power to power. Oh, that's when there's a power out of the No, the product rule of power. Yeah, what does oh, that power. mean? You add the why? That the bases are the same. Well, you divide you divide two and eight, right, right here. Okay, and the x. There's oh. six x here. There's seven x here. There's thirteen <coughs> x together. Okay. Now I'm gonna change this to a four. I'm gonna write this and change this to a four. And make that 16. Is there any oh. problem on how I got 16? I, I get it. I get it. Okay. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. And then I got the x to the um, 13. Wait, so you you divide it or you I should get 16? 4, 2 squared. Two. Oh, because 4 and 4. 2, two squared. So and eight. then this is this. So 8 is just 8. Oh. Yeah, it, it's first this, and then I did this. So it's going to be Okay. X. And then I did. No, where do you get five from? All the x's. We're just doing the top. The numerator. Exactly. X to the six plus seven. Seven. What about five? That's the new denominator. You don't touch the denominator. That's what I've been doing wrong. Okay. Y squared. I did that on the first time. Okay. And then we got to the six, right? You got that so far? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we do 8x to the 5th, y to the 8th. Then we simplify powers. Right? We simplify so it. when you solve it, you call it simplifying? Yeah. When you yeah. solve it, we, we call it simplifying. Okay. Do we get, um, I wrote too big. I hope you guys wrote smaller. I didn't. No. Nope. 16x <laughs> to the 13th, y to the 8th over 8x to the 5th, y to the 8th. So you don't solve the bottom problem. Yeah, because there's nothing to solve. Look, there's nothing for us to do. There's nothing. There's nothing. Okay, the numerator, there's stuff we can still work on. So we work on it until we can. Okay, so here then we get... What's your rule about? Quotient rule of power, right? Quotient. This is called a quotient. Rule quotient means divide. This is a division line. Um, quotient rule of powers. Okay, so you get two x 13 minus 5, right? And y 8 minus 8. And then we put simplify powers, right? So now you minus. And then it'll yes. be zero power rule because the 8 
Yes, then you do 2x to the 8 and y to the 0, right? And then this is simplified powers, right? This is a long one. This is too long. I don't have enough space. <laughs> I need to make space on your test. Yeah. And then um, this is the zero power rule. <laughs> You're going to the me too. I'm not. Almost. I'm going to the other box. Please. And then um, it becomes that's a one two x to the eight. Right. Because has a lot of space. Yeah, I wrote too big. Me too. So two x eight is the answer. Yes. Did you guys? Did I miss anything? Okay, I get that. I no. Get it. You got it right. I got it right. Now I understand. Good. Slower is better. Yeah. Negative 3, negative 5, right? Positive 15, right? What is this called? What are we doing? Product rule of powers. Product is answer to multiplication. Product rule of powers. So wait. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, plenty. Oh my gosh, you should say something. That's what you should do. Okay. It's not a negative, right? Oh yeah, two negatives on a positive. Okay, we add the exponent, right? <coughs> negative two plus thirteen. <coughs> Y negative seven plus seven. Z two plus a negative three. So we simplify. Now. Now we call this simplify what? Powers. 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 Got it. When you are working on it, this is called simplify. This is where I use my calculator because I don't get the negative. Powers. Oh, that's not good. I get it. I get them, but like I. So you want to make sure. Yeah. 11, y to the 0, z to the negative 1. When they're different, the, when they're different, you subtract. The answer always takes a bigger number. Yeah, so since 13 is a bigger number, it takes a positive. Okay? So what do we do now? There's two rules you can use. It doesn't matter which rule you use. Zero power. Zero power. Zero power. Or, negative. or negative. Okay, whichever one. You do zero power first. It doesn't matter. They're both just a zero power rule. All right, so cross that out. Okay, so we get 15x to 11 z to the first. What rule are we going to use now? Negative. Negative power rule. <laughs> okay. So 15x to the 11th over z, right? Yeah. She's been recording. Okay. Wait. So it's just z, not z1. You can put the one, but everyone knows z is one. Oh yeah, true. Okay. I'm gonna erase this here for now, so I have room. I wish we could. I wish we could. Yeah. I know. Hey, I wish we could too. Hey. Okay, what do we do first here? Now, there's many things you can do. Okay, there's many things you can do. You can do power to power, but that's going to be harder because there's negative exponents. You don't want to work with a negative exponent, power to power. Yes, Um. I need to, I need to answer my husband. Go ahead. That's what you've been denying. <laughs> yeah, and then my son. You should not deny. I know. I was trying to answer it, and I accidentally. Can I go sit back there? Okay, guys. What what rule first? <laughs> Negative. Power rule. Can you pick up Isaac? Okay, give him a call. Okay, I'll call him. Bye. <laughs> Bye, honey. I have a classroom call. I'm very rude. She does that to me. She says, give him a call. I'll call him.
Okay, negative power <coughs> rule, we just switch them, right? Yeah, you switch them. You switch the whole thing. Don't change the inside. Would you call that a the, the, the inside, yeah, the reciprocal. You do, um, but there's no division. Yeah, but it is a division. This, that's why it's called quotient. Oh, <laughs> 12x squared y to the fifth. The, the inside preserve itself. You understand? Yeah. Okay, only the outside um, becomes its opposite. Okay, so negative 4. So you just flip it? Yes. Hey Isaac, Dad's coming. Oh, what what happened? You left your voice mic. Okay, then what do we do now? You do the power to power rule. Power to power. No, the whole number never changes. It preserves itself. Only the exponent. Never. Those are whole numbers. Whole numbers never change. When you do a reciprocal, if it's a negative one half, when you switch it, it's still a negative two, negative two over one. Right? Same thing. Power to a power. So you get. 12 squared, x to the 4th, y to the 10th, right? And then negative 4 to the 4th, x to the 4th, y to the 4th. Shh. Okay, so you get, now you do quotient rule, right? Rule of powers. What do we do with quotient rule of powers? Let's, let's do this first. That's 144 over, um, what's 16 times 16? 32. 16 times 16. 30. 16 times 16. 16 times 56. <laughs> it's not 32. Or is it 256? 256. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. like two off. Okay. <laughs> this is zero power rule, right? I wrote too big again. Really? We have this whole space. And you wrote oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, and then we simplify powers. Okay. Got that? You got this down, right? Shh. Reduce. Does 12 go into 256 evenly? Try 12. Can you guys try 12 divided by 250, 256 divided by 12? Uh, 256. No. Nope. No. Let, let's reduce it by 2. Shh. That's 72 over... Sunshine. I can't go on to the next one. I'm going to call you that now. Sunshine. Divide by another 2. Yeah, I'm simplifying. Divide by 4. Because I didn't know what, what could go in. 9 over... Um, 8. I mean, no, 7. 4, 12, 4, 9 over 1. 17. No? 17 not even No, it's not. So we're calling it 1. 16. I don't know. Okay, so 9 over 16. So you get 9 over 16, x to the 0, and y to the 6. See how I, see how I reduce until I couldn't anymore? Okay, then we do um, zero power rule, right? Oh, I just watched some video because I missed it. So that's a 1, so that's 9y to the 6 over 16. <laughs> All right, let's look at the back. Scientific notation. 
You need to know this. There's one question like this, actually. Two. Shh. Okay. This ask, the question here, I always go towards the question. How much larger is three-bedroom house than a two-bedroom house? How much larger? So the average two-bedroom house is this big, while a three-bedroom house has a living space of this big. I meant to put centimeters squared here. forgot to do that. Write your answer in scientific form. <coughs> what would you need to do? Add or subtract it to see if some, how much larger something is. Yes? Subtract. subtract. Well, I haven't taught you how to subtract with exponent, scientific notation, but what can we do here? Yes? Put it in standard form. If they were normal numbers, would you able to subtract? Yes. Yes. So if you have 2.8, 2.97 times 10, let's say if you forgot how to move the decimal, what can you do? Let's say if you forgot how, how to move the decimal, what's your oh. other option? Yes. Uh, the 5, it shows how many. Yeah. You do order of operation. Shh. If you forget where to move the decimal, you do order of operation. 10 to the fifth, get that, times it by 2.9. 10 okay. to the fifth? Yeah, 10 to the fifth power. So you get, this is, you move five spaces. For the sake of time, I'm doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 2, 9, 7 with three zeros. I move this six one two three four five six right one two three yeah. okay so four five zero uh one two three four five six no it would be forty five and then zero zero okay so I can now multiply those two numbers together, right? Yeah. Right? Are we going to multiply, add, or subtract? Multiply. We're going to subtract. Oh. We say how much larger, right? We want to see how much larger oh, a yeah, three-bedroom yeah. house. But well, why do we have to turn it into, oh, we have to turn it into standard form and. So then we can subtract. Oh, okay. Subtract. To <coughs> subtract. Subtract. Why would you subtract? Yeah, to see how much different. larger it is. Is is something larger than the two bedroom, right? Have to remember to always put it in the center. It's common core. It's larger than two. Two bedroom. I don't have enough room. So let what when you subtract, what did you guys get? Um, you put four first, four five. Yeah, you can always put the bigger number first. One, two, three, four, five, six. Forty-four, seven oh three, and then three zeros after. That. Four four. Okay, four four seven oh three. Zero zero zero. Okay, make that scientific notation. Where would we put the decimal? Um, you minus, the four. You minus between the right two there. four, right? <coughs> so 4.4703 4 times 10 to the what power? Times 10 to the what power? Um, one, seven? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Okay. No. So we don't have to put the zeros after 703? No. Put those zeros? No, you don't have to. Okay. You what want, if we do? Would it be wrong? It's wrong. A scientific elimination only goes, those no, means nothing. Yeah. Can I subtract them like at 4 and 20,000? Then you're subtracting wrong by accident. 4 goes first. The 4 goes first. Well, you, you're pressing something wrong. Because everyone else got this. Yeah. Okay? So you're pressing something wrong. Okay, I need to move on. Okay, if I press something wrong, watch the video, redo it. Okay. Um, you know how to do it. Okay. An individual, I actually got this from the internet, is this much, right? 
You know how to do the rest, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Besides, we did this. Okay, now the sequence, you're okay with sequences, right? Yeah. Okay, kind of help with the chart. The chart, who yeah. ran the fastest? That's easy. What you do you need to do to the decimal? Uh, you divide one and three. Yeah, you need to make it and into a decimal, right? Into a decimal, yeah. So divide those numbers? I'll help you out. Yeah, you need to make it into a decimal. You need to know how to make it into a decimal. Okay. And then see who ran the fastest. Remember, the slowest time is the fastest person, right? Yes. Okay. This will help. The blue paper is not working? No, only the green. No, I don't need, I need to help um, um, the boys over there. Don't, don't go, boys. I'll text Miss, the band teacher.